All right, well, we'll just go ahead and get started. This is being um, recorded, so we'll be able to um, share it later um, for those that are still filtering in or want further information. So um, welcome everyone and thank you for giving us your time. Um, we are getting ready for the, we're getting the final pieces um, of the next MIH funding round um, ready to go. So as you all are probably aware, you know, you received um, a few different funding um, tranches and then the, the new KHITC. And so the next step in our um, program is rolling out these, um, the ARPA funds. So um, first I want to note, um, you can go to the next slide. Yep, just a couple of acronyms. Many of you are probably aware of them, but first of course is the modern income housing. So we have a few different um, funding pieces that are a part of that umbrella, the new umbrella of MIH. Um, and so often it's referred to as MIH. So we're talking today about the ARPA um, tranche of the 62 million. And so that's out of the American Rescue Plan Act. And so that's uh, those funds are out of that act. Um, there's some other you know, housing things that came out of that uh, that we are also administering and other pieces of the work that we do at KHRC. So out of this 20 million, um, this is going to be out of the state and local fiscal recovery funds. Um, you'll hear it referred to as SLFRF, um, FRF, or SLRF. And so we we will use those terms interchangeably, but that is what we're talking about. So the 20 million that we are discussing today is this federal um, money. And so as you'll see, there are some other pieces and some other hoops that we have to jump through to utilize that money. So today we are going to um, listen to your comments and your questions. Uh, we will quickly go over just the background and then Jason Fizell is going to go over the, the exact changes that are in the RFP associated with the ARPA funds. And then um, we'll discuss the timeline for this funding round and then we'll hear your questions or comments um, after. And so, of course, with the um, as with all of these other comment period um, webinars that we've done, you can type your um, question or comment into the chat box, um, or you can request to unmute your mic, and um, we can have a discussion or take your comment. Um, I believe that the, all of the comments will go um, to Abby, and so she will um, get them to us um, through another uh, communication mechanism. Um, and so, um, go ahead and um, do that throughout the the webinar um, or at the end. And um, all of our comments, we should um, re receive them if you have additional comments through our MIH email inbox. And we wanna get those comments by the end of the day on Friday, December 9th. And then um, with the goal that we wanna turn the final RFP around by middle of next week so that, that you have that available and ready so um, to apply in February, which Jason will go over that timeline. Um, and this is the, as I mentioned, the umbrella that we have right now of funding. Um, and so again, we're talking about the ARPA um, SLFRF funds. And the, the goal or the, the purpose is that we will be allowing or we will be accepting grants or loan applications from cities or counties to develop uh, multifamily rental units um, or single family for purchase homes. And again, this is through four communities that are less than 60,000. So those are cities with less than 60,000 or counties and counties can apply um, on behalf of communities that are less than 60,000 if their county is larger than that. I mean, and um, we have highlighted the 20 million of the umbrella funds that we have available right now. And with that, I'm gonna turn it over to Jason. Thank you. Great, thanks, Alyssa. Uh, well, first, just have to start with um, this slide and, and links to these documents will be in the uh, final RFP. They're in the draft, but kind of um, um, obscured by the red line version because we wanted to provide a red line version to show the changes, uh, substantive changes from the um, MIH RFP, but they are there if you hover over them. Um, you'll see that it's a link and then you can hit control and um, click on it and it will take you to these. I will say uh, these are resources that we really have to point you to, but we don't want to have you uh, scared away by these. Um, as I'll detail in subsequent slides, uh, the requirements for these funds are, are really um, very um, um, streamlined.
Um, so really the funds fall under two eligible use categories. Uh, the overarching one is revenue replacement. Um, sometimes treasury calls it re revenue loss, but it's for uh, provision of government services. And um, in terms of ARPA funds, these are the most flexible eligible use categories and they're subject to streamlined reporting and compliance requirements. Um, for example, you don't have to report on subgrantees or subrecipients. Um, that you all will be using to, to do the work. So that's a really um, big advantage uh, for these funds. And then also I just put in real quickly, one of the FAQs, um, and it really is to say that um, you'll be subject primarily to um, those established practices and policies that you already use um, for your um, um, incurrence of costs um, in accordance with the laws and procedures um, that you already follow for your own funds. And this is related to 2 CFR 200, and I'm not gonna get into that in detail today, um, but just generally allowable um, accounting practices and the uniform guidance. So then just real quick highlights of the draft RFP, RFP and what's changed um, with the other RFPs that we have out um, that just were recently released. Um, we did extend the deadline uh, or not extend. We um, made the deadline a few um, three weeks later than we were originally anticipating just to give folks more time, um, especially with the holidays to develop their proposals. So the due date will be February 17th at 5 p.m. Um, just real quickly, we'll go over current funding priorities, application requirements, and then very basic restrictions on use. So funding priorities, we expect to release about 10 million of the 20 million ARPA funds in this round. Again, we're doing rounds every four months, so there will be a subsequent ARPA round, as well as 5 million in the SGF or um, State General Fund and 6 million in the uh, Kansas Housing Investor Tax Credit um, that are all due in this February round. And the one of the largest differences is that we're really um, anticipating this for larger projects. Previously for MIH only, our um, cap had been 650,000. That's now our low end and we're anticipating projects possibly going up to as high as uh, 3.5 million. So really the idea is to get larger scale projects um, um, proposed to us and, and funded um, and completed um, just because we know there are the need, there is the need out there for that. And then just like in prior rounds, equitable distribution around the state um, to those areas with housing needs and um, um, jobs and employment positions that are not being filled due to a lack of housing stock. And then, and then uh, finally, we did add, of course, the adhering to the requirements, the ARPA funds. So more priorities, um, again, just um, prioritizing economic development and leveraging funds from other sources, that's important. Um, also those applications with a rural housing incentive district um, in place uh, will be prioritized as well. Um, and then we are looking for um, applicants to submit one application for, per funding round and that that includes one overarching project. And then uh, one requirement of ARPA is that everybody have um, that receives funding have a SAM.gov profile and provide their um, what's used to be a DUNS number, but now is the unique entity identifier or UEI that's found on that SAM.gov profile. And that does take some time to uh, to set up the profile and get through the whole process. So we do encourage folks to do that ahead of time. However, since the applicants have to be city or counties, we really anticipate that everybody um, has this already in place most likely. Um, if not, just go to sam.gov and um, it'll walk you through how to do that. And since uh, the recipients, the direct recipients, the cities or counties will be considered subrecipients of federal funding, um, we do um, need for them to follow appropriate state or local procurement policies. So that's this next slide. And this is just really, you know, previously for MIH projects, uh, we had asked if possible to have developers and contractors in place uh, for the proposal, just so that we knew that those are projects that would be ready to go forward. Um, in this case, we recognize that that may not be the case, or if it is, um, it might kind of go contrary to um, a, a, a procurement process. However, we did um, consult with um, uh, uh, um, 
and those in the compliance world, and they encourage us to, to put it in this way, if there is already a contractor in place, we just need you all to submit a sole source or competition impractical request outlining the rationale for why you're working with that particular entity. Um, if they are not in place, then just a description and documentation of the procurement policies or processes that you normally follow and that you would be following in this case. And then finally, um, added this slide, and, and this is really the only re real restrictions or pro uh, prohibition on use for these um, uh, revenue loss funds are uh, these uh, five bullets. And really, none of these are going to apply to construction projects for affordable housing, but just wanted you to be aware this is found in the guidance and the FAQs. Um, and really, there's one mentioned, the third one down, debt service, and that's not related to construction loans for affordable housing, which are specifically allowed in the, in the FAQ and final rule, um, but just so that folks are aware that those restrictions are out there. So with that, I will turn it back over to Alyssa for the public hearing portion. Thank you, Jason. Um, so just to, to reiterate, the, we want to hear your comments. Or we need to receive your comments by the end of the day on Friday, December 9th. Um, we anticipate releasing the final RFP on Wednesday, December 14th, along with the application um, for the, the Excel applications for this piece of funding. And we also anticipate releasing the applications for the um, SGF and the KHITC, the updates that are going to come with that um, on December 14th. And applications will be due at the end of the day, Friday, February 17th. Um, and that that's the timelines right now. So we can go ahead and take um, your questions or comments. And we have a couple comments um, that I can go ahead and address while we're um, while we're waiting. Um, so again, you, you can put it in the comment box um, or let um, Abby know that you want to unmute, unmute your mic. Um, so the first was thanking us for the adjusting the deadline. And I did want to just address that really quickly um, to, to say our, our goal is to, uh, we had extended this deadline because we heard um, in the previous um, funding rounds or the previous um, hearings was that it's a, it's a quick turnaround considering we are announcing the next round of MIH and the first round of KHITC announcements on um, I believe December 16th. And so if people did not get funded for that December 16th round, turning that around by the end of January was gonna be um, really difficult, um, especially with the holidays. And so we um, pushed this deadline back to the 17th, but we do anticipate being able to get back on the February or the four month cycle that we had originally planned after this. Um, so we're just trying to make um, space for this extended deadline with the first round of KHITC. So I just wanted to get that out there. The next question was, can MIH ARPA um, be paired with housing investor tax credit? Um, and yes, the answer is yes. Um, we You can pair those two and we anticipate that um, they will be paired together. So um, we will have, so the application, how the application is going to look um, now going forward is you'll submit an application for, um, in any application that's coming in for a housing development proposal will submit some basic information. And then depending on the type of funding that you're going to come in, um, you're requesting, you will submit um, supplement documents for those um, funding pieces. And so if you are doing an ARPA and an HI, KHITC application, then you would submit um, the pieces that are specific to those different funding pieces. I mean, those are all the questions that I see. So um, please go ahead and um, put them in the in the chat if you have them, um, and we can address them. Alyssa, is this the same as the MIH, which it's the city's the applicant? Yes. Yes. And if you had a, I'll call it a regular MIH application for a city, could they also apply for this ARPA application or do you just want one application at a time? Um, so, um, so are you asking for one project or one? Um, well, so, the, I mean, this, this is targeted at, I would assume, kind of larger scale multifamily, which is, as we all know, very difficult to do. So yeah. if a city also was, let's say we were trying to do a, a multifamily in a community, but we also had an application in for a single family project that was separate, not in this ARPA lane, but in the MIH lane, is that possible? 
Um, that's a good question. And I think that um, right now it is not possible because we are put, we're doing, I mean, um, because we're doing these applications every four months, what we mm -hmm. would want to see is that those applications be submitted, um, one submitted and then four months later, the other submitted. Um, the what we're seeing with the current applications that we're reviewing is it gets really unwieldy really fast if we're doing multiple projects in the same application. Um, and so that's what our um, what we would like to see um, for future rounds. Yeah, and, well, I noticed that, but and still you wouldn't want two separate applications, one for ARPA and one for. Nope, that is correct, because we can only accept one application per um, community. And so, um, yeah. What about um, if you applied in the first round, but came back and said, well, we'd maybe like to apply for the ARPA um, because put a kind of a size limit on projects because of the funds that were available. Meaning we have an application in right now. Um, my suggestion would be to um, let us know that. Um, I mean, that's something that, but I think that you would have to, you have to make the decision to withdraw your application. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. So we got another question is, can a city apply for these funds for the development of in infrastructure for a subdivision? So this is going to be the same as our MIH funds in that you can apply for infrastructure, but we will part of the funds will need to be for um, housing development. So we will not do just infrastructure. Um, and also we will ask and we will be we will look at um, why you're not utilizing RHID. And it's possible that there's a there's a very valid reason, but we'll we'll ask that question and we'll want to know the answer to that. Um, we had a question, say, when you say large projects, do you have a unit count in mind? Um, that is a good question. And we do, I do not have a unit count um, in mind. I think, um, I, don't, I don't have a unit count in mind. That's a good question. Yeah, we'll at we'll look at that for the FAQ. I'd like to look at what um, and you can see in the current MIH applications, you know what that cost per unit or what that request per unit is. Um, and I would say that that's probably a pretty good guide um, for the for the ARPA funds. Is there a reasonable level, a guideline on the maximum MIH grant funds per dwelling? The minimum 650 means that MIH units per unit on a 20 unit project would be 32,500. Um, there is not a maximum um, per dwelling. Um, and that just in general, there isn't. We do look to see, um, and we balance a few things when we're thinking about this, right? Like a small community, um, that doesn't that you know two units is going to make a huge impact. Their uh, maximum MIH per dwelling is going to be, or what we would maybe ex see as reasonable, would be a little higher than maybe a larger community that has the ability to um, you know get more contractors, get more leveraged funds. And so we do look at that, but you know it's in a it's in a broader context. Can you do a countywide housing project? Um, so the next question says, can you do countywide housing projects? Yes, we do accept applications um, submitted by a county um, and they can um, you know, span multiple communities. Yes. That's all the questions that we have right now. So we can continue to review them as they're coming in. Did I hear you say that the first round will be announced on December 16th? Yes, that is correct. So the applications that we are currently reviewing, um, we are on track to make those funding announcements. So for the, for the MIH um, applications that noted that they would be tied to a KHITC um, and then the KHITC applications that we received, those applications, um, we will announce them on December 16th. Yes.
So we can go ahead and wait for maybe four more minutes. If there's um, more questions, um, we'd be happy to hear them. But I also don't want to, um, you know, hold up hold up the line if it's unnecessary. Oh, we got another question. Okay, will the maximum grant amount still be six fifty, or given the larger projects, will the max be larger? So um, on the MIH um, ARPA, so the the funds that we're discussing today, um, those will be larger. And so we are anticipating that those al allocations will be between 650, um, and I wasn't paying attention, 3 million or 3.5 3. 3. 3. million. 3.5 million, <laughs> thank you. Um, and um, so so the, the ARPA money will be the Lowe's larger projects. Um, and then the MIH SGF funds, the regular MIH um, that used to come, or that does come out of the state general fund, those will still have a maximum of 650. Um, and we uh, anticipate, you know, with the SGF would, or the um, ARPA will be larger scale projects um, and larger, probably larger communities. And then uh, for the time being, the MIH regular funds will be prioritized for those smaller communities. Do you anticipate another 10 million of MIH ARPA in the next cycle? That is a great question, and I don't know. I don't know the answer. We'll see um, what you know what we get in the applications this round, and then also our goal is to start the so the last 20 million is the revolving loan fund, and so we'd like to start putting that out the next round. Um, and so we'll see how um, that looks. But we, I mean, we will put out additional ARPA funds. The ARPA money, we have a hard um, expenditure deadline of at the end of 2026. So we need to make sure that these projects um, are moving and they're you know, headed in that direction um, sooner rather than later. So um, I don't know if it'll be 10 million, um, but we'll, we will let you know as soon as we know. We received a question that says, oh, here it is. Okay, it was on my phone, but not on my screen. Um, is the creation of a pool of money for home buyer assistance considered an eligible project? Um, no, it would not be an eligible project. So the MIH has to be for the development of um, housing units. Um, and so 
home buyer, uh, a pool of money would not um, not be an eligible expense or an eligible project. We can wait again another three or four minutes. We had another question. Uh, do cities that are under 60,000 in population apply for the MIH ARPA funds if their city or count is in a county over 60,000 directly? Do they have to go through their county? No, that's a good question. So um, there's a couple options. So for, for cities that are under 60,000, they can apply um, on their own. Uh, they can apply as a city. Um, but the county can also apply on their behalf if that's if that's the route that they want to go. Um, and in that case, a city can apply and then a county can also apply on the city's behalf. You know, so it's like there's two there could possibly then be two applications in the same community, but through those different routes. Um, um, or a county can apply for a you know a countywide project or a county you know a project that's in a couple of counties or whatever um, if that county is under sixty thousand. For those counties that are over sixty thousand, so Douglas County is um, a, an example that we've done um, recently. Um, they can uh, Douglas County is larger than sixty thousand, but they can apply on behalf of communities that are smaller than sixty thousand. Um, and so, in that case, they applied on behalf of Eudora and Baldwin City. Those are two communities that are under sixty thousand. Okay. The next question is: um, uh, so they do not have to. Just to I want to button that up. So they do not have to go through the county. They can go through the city. M more often than not, our communities, our applications come from specific cities or county cities inside counties. Um, how about for a downtown revitalization project where the project would offer gap financing to builder owner building owners to develop upper story living units? Yes, we have we have seen that. Um, we have done a few of those. Um, in the past, and so that is a that is a pro, that is a program that can exist. So um, in that situation, when the application comes in, um, it would be more probably more competitive if um, there is a there is a project. You know, what are you doing in those downtown um, units and those buildings? And so how many units? How what? Uh, you know, who is going to own them? What is the um, rent going to be or the, the sale of those units? Um, and they will still have, if they're going to be rental units, then they will be, um, you know, restricted to that, that income limit that up to 150% AMI for five years. Um, and if they're going to sell those units like condos, then they would um, also still have a five-year um, clawback provision on them.
Okay, so we have a, um, a question and it's, it's a little lengthy, so I'm gonna go ahead and read it. Um, we have a project that was not funded through KHRC previously that we can now increase MIH units and we have a specific city housing study. It would also qualify for RHID in our local NRP program. Is that what you mean when you say that projects can use more than just MIH front funds? You want to see projects that have multiple funding sources and options. Um, yes, yeah, so we want to see um, that MIH is a, is a piece of that puzzle, um, that we are leveraging resources. Um, I think MIH um, enjoys a leveraging um, ratio of, I think, like four or five dollars for every one dollar that we put out there. Um, and that's something that um, makes this program successful. It's what something that um, people view as a, as a positive piece of this program. And so we want to make sure that these projects are utilizing other resources. And that can be um, NRP and RHID. Um, but it can also be even conventional financing um, or, uh, you know, soft debt or, uh, you know, foundations, anything like that. We just want to see that the MIH is a piece of the, is of the puzzle. It's not the whole um, funding. Um, but to be clear, we also want to make, so we have a project, um, when, so when you say we have a project, we want to make sure that the project, so um, MIH is coming in um, before the project starts. Um, we don't want to, if it's already started, um, we, we don't want to put MIH in those funds because we have accessibility requirements, we have an energy efficiency things, and so we want to make sure that those um, requirements are being met before the project starts. We'll wait for a couple more minutes. Happy to answer questions as long as we need, um, but just don't wanna keep people on if we don't need to. All right. Well, um, just as a as a reminder, we want to hear your comments. We want to hear your questions and your feedback um, at any time. But we'll be able to incorporate those or think think through those comments um, if we receive them before the end of the day on Friday, December 9th. Please submit them to the MIH at kshousingcorp.org um, email address. Um, and as always, you can reach out to any of us on our team, and we're you know we're happy to help or talk through anything. Um, and we anticipate that the RFP 
the final RFP and application will be out in the middle of next week. Um, and then those applications will be due on February 17th. Um, thank you again for your time and your energy. You know, we are pushing out a lot of resources right now and a lot of different programs um, and your um, participation in this process is huge. And it's so helpful in us developing these programs that can best serve um, our communities across the state. So thank you again, I'm really, really appreciate it. And I hope everyone has a good week. Thank you.